the one main thing I did was more just you know rebalancing um, on M1, and this was I basically took profits in, in two of the names that I was up quite a bit in, and I added to two of the names that I'm down quite a bit in. So first one was this Etsy. You know, we we started to build in this name kind of up through this 170 area earlier in June. We saw it kind of take out that retest and push an all-time highs. And as it started to kind of get smoked and come back under that prior break level, that was the time to take some profits. I believe I was up like 50% in it. So took some profits in that name along with Apple. Um, again, kind of same story. You know, if you look at both these charts, we're taking profits of these names when they're kind of top right of their daily charts. And I had to buy the two worst performers, which was Baba and uh, Bumble. So again, Baba and Bumble look the complete opposite of Apple and Etsy. These are near their 52 week lows, but we're taking the profits from those winners, adding them back to the names when they're you know, a little bit more beat up. And this is not really something I would do from a swing trading standpoint, but if I'm looking at adding this name now and hold it for at least a year or two, buying it down here at 100, you know, there's no reason why I couldn't be selling it at 200 or higher. And that's just that con, you know, constant rebalancing aspect. You think, um, you think Baba's getting delisted? These new Chinese laws? I don't know, man. I mean, we'll see that. I don't, that I don't know. But just like down here, like when I, I remember some of the guys were looking at it <clears throat> when Baba was like up at 200. And it was just like, and I, again, I've been in it for the whole year. And I was like, this name is just putting in lower lows. Like that is not the opportunity or, or the spot where we want to be looking to get into it. But now that it's starting to get really beat up much, you know, the, the, the down, you know, the down moves are much quicker. Maybe we're getting closer to that capitulation and maybe it still has to push down through hundred. And I still thought that kind of a few months ago that we could still see a move down through through, through hundred before we really see like an actual low in this name. But given where Etsy and Apple was, I had to take profits in, I had to put them somewhere. So buying it basically at this price as of yesterday, I was okay with putting the risk on, you know, when it looked honestly the worst it's, it's ever looked in the past year or so. Um, but again, if they get delisted, it is what it is. You know, it's not like Baba's overall business is going to change again. There'll be some short term pain when that, if that does happen, but Baba's business model in itself isn't going to be changed by that delisting, but it just won't be good, honestly, uh, in the short term. Yeah. Yes, it will. <laughs> if they get delisted, oh. that's no, not the side. Yeah. yeah, I'm saying the stock in the short term, yeah, people will get will panic a bit, but I'm saying what Baba's business model, like what they actually do is not going to change on a daily basis because of that delisting. The stock, yeah, will get beat up a bit. If, but, you, um, if, you, if you can't trade it on any exchange, do you think that affects stock price? Well, I mean, if you can't buy it on then YC, you can still buy it, you know, it'll be just an ADR. But it is. Okay. It is. Uh, you want to hear the restructure I did in my uh, long-term portfolio? I sold yeah. everything except Apple, so now I have... 15% Apple and 85% cash, and that's my <laughs> portfolio. <laughs>